Hello, and today we're going to be going through some hard GCSE questions. I hope you enjoy. First part, we have two shapes, a sphere and a cone, and we're given the equation for their volumes. And we are asked to find the ratio of R to H. So first of all, let's write down the volume equations in terms of like symbols. So I'll write V for volume and S for volume of sphere. That's equal to 4 over 3 pi R cubed. I'm just reading off here. Similarly, we can read off here for volume of cone. So I'll write V Z for volume of cone. That's third pi R squared H. Now we are told these volumes are equal to each other. So we can set these two expressions equal to each other. So we have 4 over 3 pi r cubed is equal to a third pi r squared h. Now we just want the ratio of r to h. So ideally, we want in this equation to just have, like this equation I'm talking about, we want only r and h. So let's try and simplify this. First, notice we can divide by pi, getting rid of both pi. So we have 4 over 3 r cubed is equal to 1 over 3 r squared h. We can multiply both sides by 3, getting rid of the 3 here. And we can also divide both sides by r squared, completely getting rid of this r squared, and changing this r cubed to just r. So we have 4 r is equal to h. Now we want the ratio r to h. So r to h is equal to, well, let's see. This equation here is telling us that the value of h is four times the value of r. So h is four times bigger than r. So for every r we have, we must have four h. So the ratio is just one to four. Here we have the second part of the question. And again, it's asking us to find the ratio of r to h. However, this time we are told that the surface areas of the shapes are equal to each other. We're given the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. I'll just note surface area of sphere as s dot a for surface area and the mini s. So this surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Then we want to know the surface area of the cone, so s a c. Now the formula here is giving us the curved area. So that's just giving us like the cone bit. However, we want the total surface area of the cone. So we need to add on this bottom circle with radius r. What we do is pi r l. So we're adding the curved surface area and then we add on this bottom circles area as well, which is just pi r squared. Now, similar to last time, we set these two equal to each other because we're told they're equal. So we have 4 pi r squared equals pi r l plus pi r squared. We can take away pi r squared from both sides, giving us 3 pi r squared equals pi r l. Divide both sides by pi. So we cancel out the pi's. We get 3 r squared is equal to r l. We can divide both sides by r. We get 3 r is equal to l. Now we want the ratio between r and h, not r and l. So we need to find h in terms of l. Notice here, this is what h is going to be. And we have a right angle triangle with the hypotenuse l. This side is r and the height is h. So using Pythagoras theorem, let me just draw it out here, the triangle. Using Pythagoras, we will have r squared plus h squared is equal to l squared. So the square root of r squared plus h squared is equal to l. So we put this in for l here. Now we are a bit tight on space, so I'll just move up here. So we have 3r is equal to and we've replaced L with square root of R squared plus H squared. So square root in both sides of the equation, we get 9. Remember to square the 3 as well. 9R squared is equal to, if we square this, we get rid of the square root. Now we can just take away R, from, R squared from both sides. We have 8R squared is equal to H squared. We can take square root of both sides, 
so we will just get square root 8 multiplied by r is equal to h so now we have the ratio which is just going to be r to h is equal to 1 to root 8 and that's our final answer before we start this i just want to let you know i'm doing online tutoring more information in the description here's our second question and i'll just warn you in my opinion this one is quite difficult even i struggled with this so in this question we have red counters and green counters in a bag we are told at first we take a random counter from the bag and the probability of it being green is 3 over 7. So immediately we can also th say the probability of it being red is therefore 4 over 7. Then we put that counter back in the bag and we are adding two more red counters and three more green count counters into the bag. Now the probability of getting a green is 6 over 13. So this time, the probability of getting a red is going to be 7 over 13. And we are asked to find the original number of each color there was in the bag. So looking at a question like this, you see probability. You might think, let's do a probability tree. However, I can tell you there's a much better way to go about this question. What we need to do is look at these fractions in terms of ratios. So let's look at the first pick. So I'll just label this pick 1. At this point, the ratio of green to red is equal to 3 to 4. And when you have ratios like this, you can just turn this into a fraction by dividing these by each other. So G over R is equal to 3 over 4. And we can just multiply by R and 4. So we have 4G is equal to 3r. So here's our first equation. You may be wondering what can we do th with this? Well, let's leave it as it is for now and look at the second pick. So for the second pick, we have the amount of green counters and we're adding three to it. And then we have the red counters and we're adding two more to it. And this ratio is equal to six to seven, as you can see. Similarly, we just divide it like last time. So we have G plus 3 over R plus 2 is equal to 6 over 7. Now we can multiply by 7 and R plus 2. So we have 7 lots of G plus 3 is equal to 6 lots of R plus 2. Expanding this out, we get 7G plus 7 times 3, 21, is equal to 6r plus 6 times 2 is 12. We can simplify this now, taking away 12 from both sides. So we have, I'll just write this here because of space, 7g plus 21 minus 12 is 9 equal to 6r. Now, if you notice, we have a pair of simultaneous equations. So now the hard part of the question is gone. Here we are just solving simultaneous equations. First, let's write out the equation. 7g plus 9 is equal to 6r. Notice uh, here, if we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we have 8g is equal to 6r. And we have 6r here, so we can put the 8g straight into there. So we have 7g plus 9 is equal to, as you can see here, 8g. Now take away 7g from both sides, we have 9 is equal to g. And now we can just find r by subbing g into here so we have 4g equals 3r 4 times 9 which is 36 is equal to 3r divide both sides by 3 so we get r is equal to 12 and that's our final answer now in this question we are given the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 30.25, which is just a circle. And we are asked to find the estimates for the solution of these two simultaneous equations. x squared plus y squared equals 30.25 and y minus 2x equals 1. So one thing you need to know is that when you're solving simultaneous equations, you're essentially finding the point where the two equations meet each other. So we are already given the graph of one of these. And if we sketch this remaining graph, 
the points at where the two graphs intersect are just going to be our solutions to the equation. So we just need to go about sketching y minus 2x equals 1. Let's put this in the form y equals mx plus c. So we have y equals 2x plus 1. So the c value is 1. It crosses the y-axis at 1. Now we have a gradient of 2, which means for every increase of 1 in the x direction, we go up by 2 in the y direction. So now we can pretty quickly plot the points that this graph should be going through. And then when we've done that, we just draw a straight line through all these points. So I'll try and draw a line between them. Now in your exam, use a ruler for this, please. Don't do what I'm doing. However, this is just to explain the idea behind it. Now all we need to do is, like I said, read off the x and y values of these two points where the graph intersect each other. So here we can see x is roughly 2. So one solution is x equals 2. And when x equals 2, we have y around here. So let's just put it up here. So y is equal to 5.2. And our other solution is back here. Now x is around here. So x equals minus 2.8. And y is equal to let's see so it's somewhere around here which is minus 4.8 and that's our final answer now in the exam they'll give you a range of values that they will accept so as long as your graph is reasonable you should be within their tolerance that they give thank you for watching please like and subscribe